حرام earning has two sources. Haram because of the way it was earned and haram because of the nature of the thing earned. Explain. I, Allah, this is scary. But I have someone behind me to catch me. No, I don't want to die now. Maybe later, but not now. Ah, okay. Someone working in a riba-based bank. Riba is haram. Someone is working in the customs. So everybody gives him under the table bribes because they don't want to pay customs. They want to smuggle things. Bribes are haram. Someone who sells haram, qat, uh, um, intoxicants, cigarettes, movies, uh, inappropriate uh, magazines, income is haram. This is haram due to the nature of earning the money. So I am the earner. The money is haram for me. I go home. I give my wife, my children, my relatives. I see Sheikh Asim and I give him uh, a million shillings. Zakallah khair. Huh? Is this money halal for them? Yes. But it is haram for me. So the wife can take the money and eat with it, buy clothes with it, because it transformed into halal once it was given. The second type of haram money is haram for the nature. I stole this. It's haram for me. It's stolen. I gave it to my wife. It's haram for my wife. Why? Because it's not hers. Yeah, but my husband gave me. Yes, he gave you something he does not possess and own. It's haram. She gave it to her children. It's haram. The children gave it to their grandparents. It's haram. Haram money, meaning stolen money, can never be cleansed or changed by transferring it from one possession to the other. Haram earnings can. And the, the evidence is, the Jews consume riba and they consume haram wealth by cheating others. When a Jewish woman invited the Prophet ﷺ to a ram that she cooked for him, the Prophet answered her invitation and ate. Did not ask, this is halal mari or haram. He ate because if it's haram for her, it becomes halal for me to consume and Allah knows best. Someone is asking, someone died in the family with cancer after two days of fasting. So how would their children pay the fasting that she left? If, they, they think instead of fasting. If a person dies leaving days that he did not make up, we look at this person if he fell sick and died before recovering and was unable to make up for the missed days because he was continuously sick for one month two months three months and he died we say nobody compensate or make up for these days why because allah azza wa jal forgives this but if a person was sick he skipped five days of Ramadan. Two months later, he was healthy. He could have made up these five days, but he didn't. He waited for five, six months and died. In this case, these five days are a debt that we have to pay on behalf of the dead by his heirs, sons, daughters, husband or wife, depending on the gender they make up for these days and they can divide. If he has five children, each one fasts one day, these are five days, khalas, alhamdulillah. Can we pay money or fidya? It depends if his illness was chronic and doctors say he could never ever fast to make them up. The answer is yes. But if he had the chance and the ability and he was lazy or late, no, you cannot pay for it and Allah knows best.
Jazakumullah khair. Someone is asking, in an arranged marriage, can a Muslim man divorce his wife about loving her? Or should he stay because of the kids? If, if what? Arranged marriage. Yes. The Muslim cannot not to be loved, loving his wife. He doesn't love his wife? She, she doesn't love him. Okay. So he's asking, can he divorce her because he, he does not love her? Can he divorce her because he does not love her? This is stupid, with all due respect, Yani. Do you think all those who are married love their wives? Of course, Sheikh. No, no, the definition of love, what is it? It's not Hollywood, nor Bollywood. Nor Nollywood. I've heard this recently. They have Bollywood in India and Nollywood in Nigeria. I hope they don't have Hollywood <laughs> in Kenya. Inshallah. This is a problem, Allah. So they think that love is when I go after 20 years of 30 years of marriage, enter the house. Oh, my husband, oh, my wife. And we exchange kisses and emojis and heartbeats and, and flowers. And hey, you crazy? After five days of marriage, all of this is gone. There's nothing like this. What remains is the respect, the compassion, the mercy, the kindness, the care. And this is much, much, much more than love. Because you can love someone in one hour and leave them. This is not love. This is physical attraction. It is not the love you're talking about. So once you're married in an arranged marriage, look at the wife you have or the husband you have, whether they check all the boxes or not. Most likely, they check 90% of the boxes. 10%? Nobody's perfect. But shaitan focuses on the 10%. Ah, your spouse is, mm, is not what the one you want. Akhi, when you get this, go to a closed room, turn on the lights, and stand in front of a mirror and look deep into yourself. How many boxes do you check? Whoa, <laughs> I don't check any boxes. <laughs> and she's still living with you. She's accepting you for how bad you are. Ya yeah, do this and smell your breath. It is worse than the garbage can. <laughs> when was the last time you took a shower? In Ramadan, Sheikh. MashaAllah. <laughs> People have odor when they don't shower. You have odor. A'udhu Billah. Ya she's accepting you. And you're not Elon Musk, MashaAllah. You're throwing dollars all over the place. You have a very tight budget. Every time, where did you spend this? How much did you spend it? Show me the invoices. Why did you do this? Turn off the lights. The room, nobody's in there. Turn off the lights. Turn down the AC. So you have so many bad things in you. And she's accepting you. And she loves you. And she respects you. And now you say, Wallah, well, Sheikh, I don't have love. Go divorce her. Let her marry a real man who would protect her, who would love her, who would take care of her. And you, Go marry someone from Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood, Kedwood, and then look how she would torture you, humiliate you, insult you, and make a scandal of you everywhere. And, she, and then you come to Sheikh Asif for counseling session, you have to pay $110. <laughs> hmm. Is it allowed to have a girlfriend and to talk to her with the aim of mind? Is it allowed to, to have? To have a what? A what? A girlfriend. Yes, if you allow your sister and your daughter to have one, it's okay. Do you allow her? Why? Oh, my, my sister? No. Nobody can take her as a girlfriend. For marriage. It's okay? No, of course not, Sheikh. I'm offended. The hell with you. Who cares if you're offended or not? You want to do to other women what you don't want people to do to your own women. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal. If you are serious, no one asks whether it's okay to take a girlfriend because if you take a girlfriend tomorrow when you have daughters, they will take boyfriends. 
your sister will go out with someone you don't approve of or even those you approve of and it would cause you, cause, cause you to be have to have your reputation tarnished and you will have a scandal there is no istiqama except on the Quran and the Sunnah and ask this to any scholar is it part of the istiqama to have girlfriends boyfriends huh? of course not but my intention is to get married even though if you want to get married you have to knock the door of the house not come from the back door or from the window and what you're doing no one approves of it or allows it and definitely Quran and Sunnah does not allow any of this Unfortunately not. In Sahih al-Imam Muslim, the Prophet once alayhi salatu wasalam, while passing by Al-Abwa, which is an area outside of Medina, he cried. So the companion said, why are you crying, O Prophet of Allah? He said, I asked Allah to seek forgiveness from my mother. And Allah prevented me from doing so. And I asked Allah to grant me permission to visit her grave. And Allah allowed me to visit her grave. And in Surah at tawbah chapter 9, Allah Azza wa Jal stated that it is not permissible for the Prophet or to the believers to ask forgiveness for their relatives, relatives if they died on shirk. So this is not permissible and Allah knows best. A brother in the name of is asking, fasting but not praying, is, my, is his fast accepted? If a person fasts but he does not pray at all, and there is a difference between someone who prays on and off, prays two, three, uh, uh, not three, two, three prayers a day, and someone who does not pray at all, and when you say to him, come and pray, he said, I don't pray. Someone who does not pray at all, not one single salah, he's a kafir. Full-fledged with a big bag. Say, kafir. K-A-F-I-R. Not kafur. Kafur is supermarket. It's kafir. Someone who prays on and off, he's in great danger. Some scholars say he's a kafir, but the majority say he's still Muslim, but a very, very, very bad Muslim. So someone who does not pray at all, if he fasts, goes for hajj, gives zakat, it will all be rejected on the day of judgment and not accepted. Allah says, وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا All what they've come with of good deeds is all in vain. My brother is saying, I have an issue. Uh, he mostly watches bad things at night. So he's asking how can he quit because it leads him to even doing bad things with himself. Watch it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah, part of al-istiqama is to be observant and aware of Allah watching you. Ya akhi, when you sit, whether in day or night, and you watch pornography, or shaitan comes and says, Astaghfirullah, pornography, haram. No picture is okay. And sometimes, if you're strong in image, Astaghfirullah, nude pictures is haram. Uh, model pictures is okay. It's haram. Uh, small clips, you know, funny reels. This is how shaitan starts, step by step. Watch a movie clip. Oh, innocent, nothing haram. A little bit further, maybe some nudity. A little bit further, a lot of nudity. A little bit further, pornography a little bit further you're addicted if you knew that Allah is all hearing all seeing Allah is watching with you would you watch but you are sealed your heart is sealed is covered you don't ever remember that Allah is watching me Allah is hearing what I'm hearing 
So this means that you have to go back to stage and to square one, where you study the beautiful names of Allah, to know that Allah is Al-Sami' Al-Basir Al-Raqib Al-Hasib Al-Muqeet. All of these tell you that Allah is watching you. Allah is holding you to account. This would help you. Whether you do it at, in the day or in the night, it doesn't make a difference. Now, how to stop it? Get rid of your stupid fo uh, your smartphone. This is one of the means that take you to hell. iPad, laptops, computers, get rid of them. Sheikh, I have to do work. I have to do school. No problem. Use a PC with a big screen and put the screen in the living room, not facing the wall, facing everybody else. So when you sit to work, the screen is facing everybody, everybody can see. Oh, Sheikh, but maybe something will come and maybe I will see something that is inappropriate. That's good. Now you will stop. But when you keep hiding, you put secret codes and pin codes and protection and hide everything. Why? Because people will find it and see it. But Allah knows about it. Oh, it's okay. Allah knows about it. It's okay. But I don't want my father and my mother to know. I don't want my imam of the masjid to know. Then you have a serious problem in your aqidah, in your iman. And this is why you're not on the straight path of al-astiqama. May Allah Azza wa protect us all. Amen. If a parent is having shirk, can you not let them know anything about your life but keep the tie shirk? Can we, what? If their parents are on shirk? Yes. Can you not let them know anything about your life but keep the tie shirk? No, why would you hide things of your parents if they are on shirk? What is the end result of what you want? I want them to be guided. I want them to come to Tawheed. Is hiding things of your private life, of your work, of your marriage, of your children, will improve your relationship with them? Of course not. You judge things by the conclusion. If they are on shirk, focus on bringing them back to Tawheed. How? Giving them lectures. It doesn't work. You have just come out of the egg to them. You're still small. And you are preaching us and giving us da'wah and giving us lectures about Tawheed. They will not accept this. Let them love you. Let them respect you by showing them that I'm dutiful, I'm respectful, I am obedient, I'll do anything to please you without talking to them as if you are in an ivory tower. This is haram, this is shirk, you will go to hell. You No, come down and make them feel that you are their servant and you want them to be happy. Once they acknowledge this and believe in you and love you, when you tell them, Father, Allah says in the Quran this, what do you understand? He will understand. But when you come and, no, this is haram. Sheikh so-and-so says it is shirk. You will go to hell. You will never be saved on the day of judgment. They will not accept this. So think of the conclusion. What do you want to achieve? Not on little things. Should I tell them that my son went to uh, uh, college? Should I tell them that I, had, I, I got a raise in school, or in my work, or I bought a new car? This has nothing to do with their shirk, and Allah knows best. Saying I have a decor business where I make romantic decor for couples. Is it halal if I do non-Muslim couples too, since it may lead them to do Zina in Islam? And yeah. The scene? What kind of questions is this? <laughs> Allah says in the second ayah of chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ If you assist someone to do haram, Muslims or non-Muslims, then you're sinful. You'll get the same sin. If they are married and they want you to decorate their room, and they're married according to their religion and you decorate the room, no problem. But if you know that he's not married or he wants to have 
يعني red nights and, and wild nights in haram of course you cannot ever assist him on that someone is asking about multi-level marketing and recruitment is it haram or haram multi-level marketing or the pyramid scheme or the ponzi scheme is where you target the base of the pyramid you try to collect as many as you can who would pay something that would make the following level richer and the following level would pay the level above 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 until the one on top is gaining this pyramid scheme or multi-level marketing is not based on realities they tell you we want you to sell this card what is it oh we have only 500 cards of it what does it do oh it does wonders it doesn't do anything but let's assume or we have this bundle of software and books uh, and computer programs okay very good how much it costs 10,000 shillings and if you sell it you get 10 percent and if you recruit those who you sold it to so that they sell it to another five people these five people would add to your credit one percent of these ten thousand and likewise so you start selling but before you start selling you have to do what you have to buy so you're buying the software and you're buying the programs and the books not because you want to use them rather because you want to be enlisted in this scheme a brother came to me with his supervisor in this multi uh, marketing uh, scheme and he said sheikh it is good it's halal a product i said what did they sell you he said he, they sold me a golden uh, pen how much he said 2000 riyals i said okay what mark is it يعني, a brand is it a, a something it's rubbish 400 they sold it for 2000 they got 1600 in their own pocket they give you percentage they give them percentage and they're still making money and you're fooling others to do the same he said wallah ya sheikh you're right this is haram the fatwas of scholars is crystal clear all the products they sell are overpriced and it's a condition that you buy in order to enlist which is totally haram I had a, 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 an old video I don't even remember what I said in it four years ago five years ago about Bitcoin you can see it the essence of Bitcoin is it's not a real currency maybe maybe now in Austria it is legalized so if it is legalized under the authority of the central bank of the country that regulates it that puts regulations that you don't be yani, fooled or, or uh, uh, stolen your money and it becomes regulated like currency yes now as we speak it is not anyone can hack and we always hear in the news two billion dollars have been stolen from bitcoin or cryptocurrency or this or that why well they hacked into the computer and they took the hard drive the one forgot his password is this the money is gone and people a lot of the people why would they be interested in cryptocurrency because of the rise and fall so they say we can make easy money but what comes easy huh, goes easy ask most of those who traded in cryptocurrency they would say well oh we've lost so much but inshallah we will gain and they keep on this false hope that they will gain and they never gain so yeah yani, until it becomes regulated authorized by the country central bank then it is still haram any questions about trading Forex is haram. Uh, same old question. Yeah, every time I come to Kenya, people ask me about Forex. You guys don't have a job? <laughs> don't you have a life? All you have Forex. Why? Well, uh, because we enter and we buy. And then we sell. And then we buy. And we what did you buy? Well, I don't know. What did you sell? Well, what I had, stocks. 
what companies, I don't know. All what Forex is doing is something digital. Stock market in Kenya, you go to the bank, you buy stocks in XYZ company. Does XYZ exist? Yes. You can go to their premises, you can see their factories, you can see their machines, and you can see their trucks. They exist. So when I buy their stocks, I am a partner. This is real. But in Forex, it's all digital. You buy day trading, early morning, in the afternoon, you sell. And a lot of those who deal in Forex don't deal with their own money. I have $10,000, it's mine. I buy stocks in this company. And the stocks fall, I will not sell. I will keep it for two months until it goes up and I sell it. Halal. As long as the stocks are halal. The problem is that when you come to Forex, they say, how much you have? $10,000. Good. We'll give you $90,000 extra. <gasps> I have $100,000. Yes, we trust you. You trade in $100,000. Wow, I have lots of money. If I make this profit, I will make, oh, Bismillah. Did, 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 did. Start buying here, buying here, buying here. The $100,000 that you bought stocks with, the stocks fell down. 95, 94, 93. All of a sudden, someone overrides you and sells the whole stocks. Hey, why did you sell? Because you were losing. Yeah, but 93, I still have $3,000. said, no, the $3,000 is our profit. We saved our 90,000 and took your 3,000. So now you lost the 10,000. 10, Some of them buy on margin. Some of them buy uh, uh, with, with, with so many riba and ambiguity and, 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 and forwarding and, and the likes. All of this is haram. Only halal is when you have your money, you buy stocks in halal companies with your money and no one forces you to sell whatever you want to sell. Inshallah, after two years, it's yours. It's there. This is halal. But you cannot deal with gold, silver, or currency on online business at all. This is riba. Gold, silver, and currency, it has to be physical, simultaneous. Take and give. And Allah knows best. See, how can I pay my opinion time to my parents? By not disobeying them. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes you ask questions online. <laughs> yeah, come on. How can I be an obedient child? By obeying them. Khalas. What, what do you want me to say? I and mean, in, in reinvent the wheel? Saying when we set our money in a Gigs account. In? In an Islamic bank, they usually give us profit a month. I have a feeling it's interest. What is the way forward? This has to do with, is this Islamic bank really Islamic? Number one. If they say, yes, they have a Sharia board that overlooks all the transactions and they're uh, formed of shiuch scholars and ulama. I said, okay. Number two, the account you're opening, and let's assume it's a saving account and, or a fixed uh, deposit account where you put your money and they trade they take your money and they invest in stocks. They build a, a building and rent it and sell it and they get that and give you the profit. If the Sharia board is overlooking, this is halal. When do we know it's haram? When they tell you every month you will get a fixed 1000 shilling. Every month. This is riba. Any fixed amount of money as profit, this is riba. Oh, Sheikh, but one of my friends told me, give me $5,000 and every month he gives me $500 profit. This is riba. Anytime the capital is secure. Sheikh, another friend told me, give me $5,000 for investment. And I will give you monthly profit. But if the business loses, I guarantee you will receive your 5,000 back. This is riba because it's a loan. 
you lent him 5,000, the interest is the profit is giving you every month. And whenever there is a loss, he gives you back your loan. Business is profit and loss. You have to share the loss. If you don't, then there is no halal in it. And Allah knows best. I think because of time, we'll take the last question, inshallah. Brother, he now this question I always get is fading haram the haircut so the hadith we have number one the prophet prohibited al qaza what is al-qaza? Qaza is to shave one part of the head and leave the other. The Mr. T hair cut where he puts this mohawk and shaves here. This is qaza, haram. What the Marine, American and US and Marine do, they shave the sides and keep the top, haram. The friars, you know, the, the French uh, Catholics in their uh, churches, they shave this area and keep the rest of the hair. This is qaza, also haram. The other hadith is, وَمَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever imitates a people, he is part of them. So someone doesn't shave. But he has a fate. He has a certain way of lining his head, like Drake, Mathalan, or like uh, Rihanna, or I don't know these guys' names. Huh? They have a certain thing because the African American movie stars or celebrities, people look up to them. So, oh, he's the brother, he's like us, he's from, uh, from us, we look like him. This is haram. You're a Muslim, you have your dignity, you have your honor, you don't imitate anyone other than the Prophet Muhammad So leave your hair, all of it, or shave it, all. Or when you want to have it little, have it all on the same degree. Little fate is okay. What do you mean? Yeah, and if you do number four here, and number three here, this is not a fate. This is usually that when even you go to the barber, he cuts short a little bit here. But to have it skin and obvious that this guy is, mashallah, is a you know, rapper and do this and do that. No, this is not permissible to imitate the disbelievers and Allah Azza wa knows best. Okay? So we have 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, Shaykh, uh, does my wife break my wudu? Yeah. I've been married for 41 years. <laughs> what do you mean? She doesn't even obligate ghusl. Khalas, alhamdulillah. Okay, now on a serious note. Uh, she's part of my body now. If I kiss her or kiss my hand, it's the same impact. Listen to me. Uh, the concept of touching the opposite gender is only found in the Shafi'i madhab, where Imam Shafi'i used to say that touching the opposite gender, whether your sister, your mahram, your wife, breaks your wudu. The other scholars and schools of thought say it does not break your wudu because Prophet Muhammad والسلام, used to sit in his home. Before going to Salat, he used to kiss his wife Aisha and go without renewing his wudu. So this means that touching your wife, kissing your wife does not impact the wudu insha'Allah. And Allah knows best. I think because we've announced that that should be the last question. Inshallah, we have a brother from. Tubi Allah. If he allows you, I'm okay. Hmm. But you have to talk later, Inshallah.
<laughs> what? I will not look at you, huh? Mm. Yep. I know I'm scary. Huh? That's what my wife says, but yalla, manish, huh? Hmm. Ah, Allah, jambu jambu, karibo. What if, what if the older people, they are wearing gold, and then you tell them to remove the wool, but then they refuse and they like Okay. If elders do haram, what is our responsibility? Number one, to be respectful. Number one, to be diplomatic. Number one, to also give them the ruling because we fear that it would may take them to hell. Be respectful, diplomatic. So if you go and see your father wearing gold, this is your question. And you tell him, Father, yani, uh, there is a hadith I read in Sahih al-Bukhari where the Prophet said والسلام, these are haram for my male men and halal for the women and he held silk and gold what does it mean Baba? and the father would explain to you and he knows خلص. you did your job you don't go and say ah but you're wearing gold and you will go to hellfire what do you expect him to do? he will slap you so you have to be wise, you have to be diplomatic, you have to be yani, uh, uh, polite when you speak to the elders. And if you don't, then you have committed a more major sin and Allah knows best.